Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm going to be revisiting Dead Island 2 on the Steam Deck. It just came out on Steam and there's something interesting about Steam Deck compatibility. It says playable because you have to invoke the keyboard a couple times, but this is the first time I saw a developer comment when it comes to the Steam Deck compatibility. So you got size font adjustments is not supported and you need to restart the game after it installs the first thing. So the first time you launch it, make sure that prerequisites are installed. So it will do it on its own. Then you have a black screen, so you need to go back and relaunch the game. And at that point, it will work. And the developers stated that. So it's interesting to have this, never saw it before. So let's get into it right away. When you first get into the game, there will be a shared caching, which is good to see that will avoid more stutters than necessary. What annoys me is that you need to do it each time, but the second time you do it, it will be like this, super quick. So allow it a few seconds and we're in. So when it comes to settings, 800p. On the advanced settings, we got higher settings than before, actually. Instead of being 100% low settings, it's medium to low. I lowered a few things, but visually the game still looks almost the same, which is always good to see. FSR 2 used to be broken, now it's not broken, but it looks horrible in this game. On the smaller screen it might be less noticeable, but man, it looks like FSR 1 in this game. When targeting 40 FPS at least, Hi, I'm Carla, and I'm immune. is to Just gotta avoid it. FSR 2 in this case. So there's some stutter here and there, it uses quite a bit of VRAM. So if you're having too much stutter, consider lowering those textures. But again, I would avoid FSR2, even on the smaller screen. Just because of the fact that it's too blurry. Never known the tremors to be this bad. And I will lock it to 40 FPS. I also chose this part of the game, just because it's a bigger area. Let's see if I can make that explode. There we go. Okay, even with that big explosion, we're good to go. So that's why I recommend 40s. It's a good trade off in visuals. Less shadow distance, a little bit less level of detail. So there's more pop in. But this is more of a linear game. I wouldn't call it open world. It's like op smaller open areas with loading screens in between. And visually, it's pretty good, at least in my opinion. The thing is, when effects show up, or there's a lot of reflections, that's why I'm using an electrified weapon. Whoa. That big stutter, I think, is because it loaded this part, which is annoying. I mean, due to the <laughs> shader compilation, we shouldn't have that issue. But hey, what can you do? So again, my advice would be to keep it at 40. But I'm also going to show you a 30 FPS configuration if you want better visuals. But it's not a crazy difference when it comes to visuals. And make sure to put the refresh rate at 40 Hz as well. The evac's definitely over. Military might still be around though. Otherwise the stutter will be way too obvious, like you're seeing it right now. Well, locking it to 40 improves that situation. Because we're CPU bound sometimes. 30 FPS configuration in case you care about visuals more. Motion blur, let's disable it. I forgot to do that, sorry. Maybe at 10% would be good. On advanced now, I increase the settings to basically a mix between medium and high. Post processing is on low to disable chromatic aberration and all those filters that, in my opinion, destroy the visuals. Just a personal preference, of course. So basically, medium to high, no FSR2 because I don't like how it looks in this game. Way too soft and unstable. And on the frame rate limit, we put it at 30 FPS. So it's locked there and it should help us avoid further battery shenanigans. Battery shenanigans. CPU and GPU usage shenanigans, as I said. But you can feel the latency right away. With a controller, it's less noticeable. 
but the latency is still there. So this would be like a hundred minutes of battery, something like that. And it's still not a hundred percent free of stutter. Which is a shame, really, because the shader compilation at the start should address that issue right away. But it doesn't. Okay, water, electricity, death in shoes. But definitely the frame time is way better than when I was targeting 40. So, all up to you. Again, if you're targeting 40 as well, just lock it to that using the refresh rate option on the Steam Deck menu. And you should be good to go. And battery life 90 to 100 minutes. If you have an OLED Steam Deck, it should be way better when it comes to battery and stutter. So keep that in mind, this is an LCD deck. And the game uses quite a bit of CPU when targeting 40s. But it works. Is it better than on day one on the Epic Games Store? Definitely. I can use higher settings than before. The stutter is not 100% fixed. FSR2 is fixed though. On day one, FSR2 decreased performance. Now it improves performance a bit, but it still looks pretty bad. So I wouldn't really bother with FSR on this one. Then when it comes to performance, I was able to use higher settings. So that tells me that it improved in some capacity. And now, instead of having to install the Epic Games Store or the Heroic Games Launcher to play the game, it's directly on Steam. So that's great for Steam Deck users. It's not that you couldn't play it before, it's that it's less of a hassle to get the game to work on Steam Deck now. Because you don't have to install anything else. It's just going into gaming mode, get the game, Press when it says play and it, it works right away. You don't have to do anything. The thing is, the first time you launch the game, you need to link your Steam account with your Epic account because it uses Epic's online services. So that's a level edged sword because the online thing is through Epic. So you can do crossplay with the other PC players that are playing on the Epic Game Store. But some people had issues getting the game to work after linking the Steam account with the Epic account. So I wouldn't do the account linking right away until it's 100% figured out. But other than that, the game works better than before, at least so far. With better visuals as well. So. To me, that's a big plus. And which frame rate would I play it? Probably 40s. There are some drops due to CPU performance. And it doesn't look that much better with the 30 FPS configuration. I mean, it has better shadows, better effects, all that. But it's not like I would trade 40 versus 30. Just for those changes. But the game still looks pretty good though, at least in my opinion. So thank you guys so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. As much as I did revisiting Dead Island 2, happy to see that it's an improvement over day one. It still has issues, but it's now more playable on Steam Deck, which is always good to see. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye guys!